Honestly, I just feel like it's time that we talk about how annoying Mal can be. Hello everyone, my name is Caitlin and welcome back to my channel. So I don't know if you guys have noticed this, but Instagram has this new little memories feature where it shows you previous stories that you've posted. And a couple days ago I was reminded of this video that I wanted to do back in 2019 where I have you guys rank the Descendants characters. But then I ended up not doing it because I chose to do top Disney Channel shows instead. But then after seeing that I was just like, hey, like now I'm kind of curious as to what those results would be. So I asked you guys over on the community tab to vote for your favorite characters and so so we're gonna go over the top 10 today. But before we jump right into it, you may have noticed that I'm wearing a snazzy new pair of glasses today, and that is all thanks to today's sponsor, GlassesUSA.com. GlassesUSA.com is one of the biggest eyewear retailers in the USA. They offer thousands of eyeglasses and sunglasses from brands like Gucci, Oakley, Ray-Ban, and so much more, even including my personal favorite, the Hilary Duff collaboration. They're also super affordable as they start at $39, which is 70% off retail prices. And if you like the frames I'm wearing now, be sure to click that link in the description as they have put together an amazing exclusive offer for you guys. They also offer a collection of advanced blue light blocking lenses. So even if you don't need prescription lenses like I do, blue light blocking lenses are great for protecting your eyes when you're at home, work, or outdoors. They also help reduce eye strain, decrease headaches, improve your sleep, and increase productivity. Another great tool that GlassesUSA.com offers is their AR virtual try-on, which is great for helping you decide which frames are right for you, especially when there are so many to choose from. I personally use this tool to find the frames that I'm wearing now as well as these fun sunglasses that I'm obsessed with because I just love green and look how cute these are. I love them. It just got really dark in here, which is good. It means that these are doing their job. <laughs> um, yes, I love these, but I also love these frames. Like I've never really had like a more rounded frame like this, but I'm obsessed. Love them. Okay, so yes, what is also great about GlassesUSA.com is they offer free shipping and returns and 100% money back guarantee within 14 days. And like I said, GlassesUSA.com is offering an exclusive discount to all of my followers who click that link in the description down below. And you can also use that discount on top of any coupon codes that they currently have going on the site. And so yes, be sure to click that link in the description down below. Thank you so much to GlassesUSA.com for sponsoring this video. And thank you to you guys for checking them out. As like I always say, every time I have a sponsor, it really does help out the channel a lot. And so yes, with all that being said, let's jump right into number 10. So first up we have Hades. So he is obviously Mal's dad and he is featured in the third Descendants film. And I was really happy to see that he made this list because he's one of my personal favorite characters. And at a time when I feel like the series was really needing some of that adult influence again, that I feel like we kind of lost in the second film, he came in and just blew the whole thing out of the water. Obviously he's played by the incredible Cheyenne Jackson who has a big Broadway history so I feel like it's no surprise that he does shine as much as he does in this film. Like this man's talent is just undeniable. His dynamic with Mal as the main character was really intriguing as well especially in the final moments of the film in my opinion and I mean he's got one of the best songs from the series with Do What You Gotta Do. And while I feel like you guys know by now that I have my gripes with the third film he is definitely a highlight from it. I absolutely love his character. He's super memorable and yeah I was really happy to see that he made this list. But let's move on to number nine. So up next we have the adorable Dizzy. So she made her first appearance in the second film and then reprised her role in the third as well. So she is the daughter of Drusella who Evie kind of takes in and mentors due to their shared love of fashion and design. And of course in the second film we have her to thank for Mal's hair transformation. Whether you're a fan of that look or not, she is the one to thank for that. And then in the third film we get to see her go to Oradon for the first time and also kind of take a motherly role over Mr. Smee's kids once Audrey takes over Oradon. So Dizzy is played by the lovely Anna Cathcart who I'm sure a lot of people know from the To All The Boys series and I feel like she's one of the main reasons why Dizzy is as lovable as she is. She just brings such a wholesome and light energy to this character that I feel like it would be hard for another actor to match that energy. I also remember during the time of the Descendants 2 promos them really trying to hammer home the fact that she herself was a Descendants fan and I feel like that really does come through in the way in which she plays her character and so yes that is Dizzy at number nine. Moving on to number eight we have one of our first core four members with Jay the son of Jafar. So obviously Jay was featured in all three films as like I said, he was one of the four main cast members. And I'm not gonna lie, I was pretty disappointed to see that he was only number eight on this list, but also at the same time not really that surprised. I've complained before about how I personally felt like the franchise itself kind of left his character and Carlos's character in the dust, especially when you compare their character recognition to Mal and Evie's. And I know it's hard when the series itself is primarily aimed at young girls, and so them wanting to highlight Mal and Evie in the merch and other promotional material makes sense. But come on, I mean, they're main characters too, and I would have loved to 
to see them get the same amount of love. But what I will say is that I felt like the storylines in each movie do a great job of highlighting Jay's character. In the first movie, we get to see him fall in love with sports and the idea of being a part of a team. And then in the second film, we see his friendship with Lonnie Blossom and him even decide to make her the captain of the team by the end of the movie. And then in my personal favorite storyline of his, we have the third film where we see him and Gil bond and decide to travel the world together. So Jay is obviously played by the incredible Boo Boo Stewart. He is known for his previous works in the Twilight series and then post descendants for his role as Willie and Julie in The Phantoms. He is one of my personal favorite actors and I feel like he deserves so much more credit for carrying so many songs in these movies. Like Rotten to the Core would be nothing without Jay. Moving on to number seven, we have the daughter of the fairy godmother who is of course Jane. Now this one I 100% understand. Back in the day when the first Descendants movie came out I was very vocal about the fact that Jane was one of my favorite characters and she still is to this day. In the first movie we see her play this very relatable role of this cute little insecure girl and then in the second film we see her blossom in her relationship with Carlos and then grow into the confident character that we know and love from the third film. So Jane is played by Brenna D'Amico and I mean she is just a ray of sunshine exactly like her character. And I feel like it will be interesting to see if she makes an appearance in the spin-off series slash fourth movie whatever you want to call it since they really seem to be emphasizing the fact that the Cinderella story will play a role in this movie. But also if she's done with the series that's cool too I feel like she's already kind of made her mark on the franchise with her role as Jane and she will just forever remain such an iconic character. Moving on though I honestly wasn't even sure if I was going to include this next one due to the fact that he's not human but he made the top 10 and so I gotta give credit where credit is due and so at number six we have Carlos's beloved bestie dude the dog. He is the campus mutt and in the first movie he is the one that turns Carlos's fear of dogs into a love for them and then remains by his side throughout the rest of the series. And then as I'm sure we all remember he is given the ability to talk in the second film once he accidentally eats a truth gummy and then I guess this gummy is just like really strong and powerful because he ends up retaining that ability to talk throughout the second and third films. And then a fun fact that I feel like a lot of Descendants fans know already is that dude the dog is actually played by a female dog named Paisley and he is voiced by the comedy legend Bobby Moynihan. And so yeah that's dude I'm not surprised at all by the fact that he made this list but I do kind of feel like Jay at least deserved to be above him but that's just my two cents. At number five we have Harry Hook and so he is the son of Captain Hook and is played by Thomas Doherty. I personally was very excited to see him make his appearance in the Descendants movies as I was already a fan of his previous work on the Disney Channel series The Lodge. He played Sean, one of the male leads in that series and if you haven't seen it I just I highly recommend it. But Harry on the other hand is part of Uma's pirate crew that we meet in the second movie and he of course reprises this role in the third movie as well. He is Scottish, I'm not too sure if you noticed that, but he is very Scottish in these films. I feel like he must have been under instruction to really play into his accent in these films because I almost find him hard to understand at times, which is something that I never found with The Lodge. Like I feel like he sounds way more natural in that series, but I guess maybe he just felt that Harry Hook really needed that thick accent because he's dark and mysterious and so it just makes sense. I don't know. <laughs> but nonetheless, I definitely understand why he is a fan favorite as he is a very cunning and mischievous sort of character. And I mean, you just, you can't deny that he is an absolutely gorgeous human being. It's hard though because I feel like his character doesn't really do that much in this series besides like flirt with anything that crosses his path, but then I also at the same time have to give him credit for being responsible for one of the best rap breaks in any Disney Channel song in history with What's My Name. And he's just such a fun character that I feel like he's another one that will forever remain iconic no matter where the series goes from here. On to number four we have our main character and so Mal is up next. Now I'm not surprised at all that Mal is only number four on this list as like I said before she is the main character. So she is the one that we follow throughout the series and so she is the one who has to make mistakes and learn from them or else there would be no story. This also means that she gets the most screen time and oftentimes the more you see of a character the more their fault starts to show and then obviously in turn the more annoying they can get. But I mean what main character isn't annoying at times? Like I feel like that just comes with the territory. But at the end of the day I do still really love Mal. I feel like she's a great lead to the franchise and I feel like she goes through a lot over the course of these three movies. So of course she is the daughter of Maleficent and also Hades which we find out in the third film. In the first film we see her fall in love and realize that she doesn't have to be what her mom has always taught her to be. And then in the second we see her go through somewhat of an identity crisis with her not knowing which part of herself is her true self but then coming to terms at the end with realizing that both parts make her who she is. And then in the third she learns what being a queen means to her and makes the decision to take the barrier down. And as I'm sure we all know Mal is played by Dove Cameron who we know from other Disney Channel projects like Liv and Maddie and her music career. I personally feel like she does a great job of embodying this character and I don't think anyone else would really suit this role like she does. And she also has the best song from the series in my opinion with If Only. And so that's Mal at number four. She will honestly always have a very special place in my heart as she is the lead of the series in which I love so very much. But I'm honestly just so curious to know your guys' opinions of Mal so please leave them in the comments and down below. 
yellow so I can read them. Now taking a big jump in votes here, we have the wonderful Uma at number three. And I knew Uma was a popular character, but I didn't realize just how beloved she was until I did this poll and I was honestly just so pleasantly surprised by these results. So Uma is basically our villain in the second movie and she's the daughter of Ursula. And so she comes in, challenges Mal, and then also kidnaps Ben. And then we see her in the third movie team up with Mal and the other VKs to help stop Audrey and save Auradon. And I feel like it's pretty safe to say that she's probably the most badass character in the entire series. This girl was never afraid to fight for what she wanted and tell it like it is and honestly I just love her for it. She's also got the most streamed Descendants 2 song with What's My Name and contributes to some of my other personal favorite songs from the series like It's Going Down and Night Falls. She is played by the incredible China Ann McLean, and the fact that she is coming back for the sequel films is one of the last strands of hope I have for those movies. I'm really curious to see what's in store for her character moving forward, and I mean, yeah, she's a very iconic character, so I'm not surprised at all that she is in the top three. On to number two, though, we have the one and only Carlos. Carlos is one of my personal favorites of the core four, and I was just so happy to see that he made number two on this list. So obviously Carlos is the son of Cruella de Vil and he is featured in all three movies. As I discussed earlier, in the first movie we see him conquer his fear of dogs with his relationship with Dude, and then in the second we see him conquer another fear, but this time with confessing how he feels for Jane. We then see their relationship continue to grow in the third movie and Carlos further explore his love for animals in that movie as well. So Carlos is obviously played by the amazing Cameron Boyce who sadly passed away a few years ago. And I mean, I guess it's fair to wonder like if he hadn't, if he would be still such a fan favorite. And I genuinely think that he would be. I think his character was just as beloved before, it's just now almost like amplified. I also think it's worth noting that he is one of, if not the best dancer in this entire franchise. If you ever find yourself doing a Descendants rewatch, I highly recommend just like watching him in every single dance number, like his talent never fails to amaze me. Carlos really was just such a wholesome character, like I'll never forget the moment in the first film where Chad is like calling out the VKs for all the bad things that they've done and he just like completely skips over Carlos, because he literally never did anything wrong and he never will, he's just too much of a wholesome guy. Cameron really did bring so much life and joy into this character that he will just forever remain one of my personal favorites and I was just really glad to see him at number two. So as I'm sure to nobody's surprise, we have the queen herself at number one, which is of course Evie. So Evie is the daughter of the evil queen from Snow White and we see her go through quite a lot throughout the course of these three movies. In the first movie, she learns that her worth is not defined based off of her ability to win over a prince like her mother had taught her. We also see her discover a love for science and her passion for designing and her relationship with Doug starts here. In the second movie, her design business really takes off and we also see just how great of a friend she is to Mal, not to mention how passionate she is about getting the Isle kids onto Auradon. And then in the third film, I feel like all of this is just amplified. Her business takes off even further as we see through this cottage that she has now bought for herself. We also see her confess her love to Doug and be a part of the program that gets all of the kids off the aisle. And we also have this great scene that really solidified her as my personal favorite character where she calls out Mal and kind of puts her in her place for all of her lies. I just feel like Evie is that really really strong and independent female role model that I would have loved to have to look up to as a kid. Obviously, she is played by the wonderful Sophia Carson, who has gone on to star in many other things, as well as have a music career for herself, which is no surprise considering how incredibly talented she is. I mean, Chill and Like a Villain and One Kiss are just so iconic in their own right, and I feel like they wouldn't be half as good if she wasn't the one performing them. So yes, I feel like it's safe to say that I also love Evie, and I'm happy that you guys agree with me in that. So that is the top 10 Descendants characters according to my subscribers. I think my only complaint would be the fact that Ben didn't make this list. Like I know some people find him boring, but I personally love him and he's one of my favorite male leads. And I mean, how could he not be? Like he's such a golden retriever boy, but I will say he was number 11. So I guess that makes it kind of okay. Oh, also Lonnie was number 12. I feel like I had to mention that because I got a lot of comments on that post about people saying how much they love her and whatnot and were disappointed by the fact that she wasn't in the third movie, which I of course was disappointed by as well. But yeah, let me know if you enjoyed this video if you'd like to see me do something like this again but with another series like maybe zombies for example I would be more than happy to do that also once again if you like the glasses I'm wearing be sure to check out that link in the description down below for an exclusive offer um what else <laughs> I guess you could also let me know what your favorite Descendants character is I can't wait to read all about that anyways Kater Tots that is all I have to say for today hope you'll have a wonderful day and I, I just forgot my outro <laughs> I hope you all have a wonderful day and I'll talk to you very, very soon. Sorry for that. I don't know what that was about. I've been doing it for five years, but for some reason it disappeared. Um, all right. Time to go. <laughs> Love you guys. Bye.